My name is Stephanie Sample. I grew up in Southern Maine and I am the CEO for Fundraising for the Future. So I've got my job description right here. I do a lot as the CEO. I take care of the finances. So I um, invoice clients, I process payments, I balance my, my bank account, and I pay taxes and make sure my employees' payroll is going through. I do client management and account management. So that looks like uh, checking in on clients, reviewing all the deliverables that we're sending out and setting meetings with them and making sure the high level strategy is where it should be. Um, I do some direct account management. So I provide services for a handful of our clients directly. And those are ones usually that have been with us for a long time or ones that are just coming in. And I do sales this is one of my favorite parts. So I help figure out what individual clients need and then match them with service providers, um, usually service providers on our team. And I drop contracts. So that is, we have a written agreement for every piece of work that we deliver to folks. And I make sure that um, those terms are really clear and um, articulated in a way that is going to um, be easy to navigate. And then I also do a little bit of teaching. So that falls under marketing. Um, it's talking about the company, but I like to call myself a practitioner researcher. So I'm consulting and I'm in the field doing it. And then as I see broad trends, I go out and I uh, share with people in the form of webinars or trainings what I'm seeing across the board and how um, folks can solve some of the reoccurring systematic problems. You know, I spent five years in undergrad, and when I graduated with a degree in liberal arts, I remember thinking, maybe I should be a yoga teacher. <laughs> and I went to Europe, and I traveled for about two years and taught, taught English. And I got to interface with a lot of business people there, learning a second language. And um, I was really fascinated with culture and different cultures. Um, and it was actually after my second degree, so I got my master's degree, and in language and culture. And in that degree, I started um, finding scholarships to fund my own studies. And then I looked around at my peers and they were having trouble finding scholarships. And so I thought, all right, maybe I can help some of my peers get connected to money. That wasn't what I was studying, but it was what was really dynamic. And I feel like one one piece that has guided me all along is, I mean, for lack of a better word, listening to my heart. Um, you know, I took time off after my undergrad before I went to my, my graduate school. Um, and I think there's something really important about that space and figuring out who I, who I am and um, letting it unfold without feeling, you know, the pressure to kind of define myself. But, um, you know, I had an inkling that I wanted to run my own consulting firm. I was a, a full-time nonprofit employee, and I went and I found someone who did it. And I asked her out to lunch, and we sat down, and I remember talking to her about what it was like to be a consultant, and she, I asked her for her books, and she actually gave me two years of her operating books. And I was so scared I didn't open them up for about a year after she gave them to me. But when I opened them up and looked, I saw, you know, the expenses of running her business were finite. They weren't infinite. And her revenue was enough to cover her expenses. And I, um, having that template, both of the person she was and how she'd gone down that path, and then having that financial piece too, really gave me some courage, I think, to step out on my own. High school, I tell people my high school diploma was the hardest degree I got. It was harder than my undergrad, harder than my master's. Um, and, you know, I had a, a friendship with a teacher. Her name was Miss Ferrucci at Hamden High School in Hamden, Connecticut. She gave me a desk in her classroom and said, you know, this is your space. You can come whatever period you want and you can work on whatever you want to do. And I felt like, I felt safe there. And I felt like I could create and be creative and I didn't have to worry about kind of checking the boxes. And she actually hooked me up with some extracurricular study opportunities. So we, she hooked me up with an English teacher and we started creating independent studies, which was much more my speed. It was like, what do you want to learn about? Let's put a curriculum together and then get a few other students so you can get credit for that. 
So um, I took a couple classes at local colleges while I was in high school. Um, I, I created a poetry independent study that I did for three years. And, you know, we got to travel to see poets speak and had a public reading. And for me, having teachers that kind of let me design according to my own interests was, was freedom. And that really helped reinforce the sense that one, I'm smart and two, I'm capable. And um, I just didn't thrive in classes where there was a lot of box checking. Um, wasn't wasn't my thing. So I'd say Miss Ferrucci and, and Greg Coleman, my poetry independent poetry teacher, and people who saw me as a leader and capable of being self-directed. I would say listen to your gut. Basically, um, I think there's so much pressure to do and be what other people want you to do and be and fear of failure if you don't kind of follow the herd. But if you have an inkling or a sense or a curiosity or a desire to explore um, and you have the capacity to, you know, to follow that, to pull the thread without having to know where it's going to lead, um, I think that's a really powerful thing. Um, so, yeah, trust your intuition. Listen to your gut.